right? Okay. Um, thank you for coming to this uh, presentation on um, giving, giving, give your church, synagogue, or mock site a divine work, uh, a divine makeover with WordPress. And of course, I'm waking up myself, so pardon me. Um, I'd like to thank uh, my friend, my new friend here, Me Melanie Adcock, who told me she's a church lady, and she also works on a lot of um, church websites. So I'm going to be calling on a little bit of her expertise as well um, during this presentation. And as well, I want us to come to church, to synagogue, to mosque, to vent it out. If, you're, if, you're, if this is a niche that you're interested in or if you have a beef with your religious organization's website, definitely I don't want you to hold back. I want you to basin to definitely um, participate and tell us about some of the problems and the issues um, that you're dealing with so we can ha make this a uh, community discussion as well so we can talk about some of the solutions not only that I've found, uh, Melanie have found, but also maybe some of you guys have found, but also have um, come up with, you've, you have a problem that needs to be solved. And that's something that maybe we could just jot down that, oh, we have this particular problem with our site, and we may not have the solution right now, but we can come up with it a little bit later. So on, uh, with that, I'm going to turn, hand over the mic to Melanie for a moment. the podium. So who do we have, if, you, if I can get just a little bit of an understanding of who do we have in the audience uh, right now. Do we have, how many people are working on church sites or are interested in working on church sites? Okay, let's show a hand. Uh, what about synagogue sites? Okay. Uh, mosque sites? Curiosity seekers? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Very good. All right, just to let you know a little bit about who I am. By day, I'm a digital and community manager at Georgia Public Broadcasting. That just essentially means that I update content on their website as well, well as on their social media voice. But by my free time, I'm the content manager for Our Lady of Lords' uh, website. And I'm a paid contractor to do that. It's uh, not a lot of money, because as you all well know, a lot of religious organizations don't have a lot of money. But it was something that over the years I was able to convince them to do. Um, just a little bit about Our Lady of Lords. It's a historically African-American Catholic church. Um, it's known for that, very much so, for being the mother church for African-Americans in Atlanta. Um, it's very well known for being a social justice church, so where there is a protest and an injustice in the world, you will see Our Lady Lord's members out there with a sign on your side. Um, it's also known for a very unique liturgy. It is not traditional Catholic. If you're a traditional Catholic and you go, and if, if you're not, and you're expecting, you know, very stayed boring, you will have a heart attack because it is not that kind of liturgy. It's uh, very upbeat gospel music, contemporary music. The service uh, lasts longer than a typical Catholic mass, which is typically 45 minutes to an hour. Lords, you'll be there prepared to be there for an hour and a half. Um, and uh, we have a, a fairly, I'll call him new because uh, he's, he's been there for five years and that's kind of still new in the Catholic universe for, for pastors. We have a, a new pastor who's from the Dominican order and he's really embraced um, Atlanta and the Lord's style and making sure that um, it continues the legacy as well as embracing what's going on in the future. And so what some of the challenges, and, and I'd also like to turn this over to the crowd a little bit as well. Um, these are the challenges that we've had with updating the site. Um, that A, we want to reflect um, its history. We want to serve the home crowd. Um, but we also want to welcome the new people because there are a lot of uh, new members and a lot of visitors that come by. It's grown exponentially. Um, so the challenge of serving that and expressing that on the website, that, that's one of the challenges, of course. Um, of course, 
Number one, does, does this sound familiar? Getting help from the congregation as a challenge uh, to update your site, right? Yeah. Um, everyone usually has an opinion. Everyone on a web, any website, they have an opinion. But everyone, of course, has an opinion on how a church or religious organization site should look like. And it's typically wrong. Um, one time, someone asked me um, if we could put shout outs to groups. Can, can we do a birthday shout out on the website each month? And I was like, no, we cannot do a birthday shout out on the website each month. Or how, how about this one? Can we get something to flash across the screen that, that tells you what event is going on? No, we cannot do that. <laughs> and then there's usually the bad photos, you know, the photos of, of um, I, either it's out of focus or it's someone has uh, taken it with their iPhone and it, it, it just does not translate very well um, online. So does, uh, before I move on, does, does anyone want to add to that hit list of challenges? Uh, Melanie, uh, you, use, your, use your mic. <laughs> submitting vertical pictures for horizontal slider. Yeah. yeah. And the only way to convince them is to chop their head off and send it back to them. Because some people cannot grasp that concept. Most people can't grasp that concept. Um, probably 90% of my clients will send me vertical pictures for a horizontal slider. And it's not even churches. Um, and you'll say, well, you know, I really can't put this in a horizontal picture, you know, frame. You try to use as small words as you can possibly do and not be any technical. And one I just literally had to chop the person's chin and forehead off and send it back to them before they got the concept. So there you have it right there, a pointer. So whenever they send you really bad photos, give them a rendition of what it would look like and send it back to them <laughs> as a way to, to nip that in the bud. <laughs> OK, uh, anyone else before we, we move on want to chime in? Don't be shy. OK. All right, so what do religious websites typically look like? So I, I kind of did a little search. And oh, we have someone in the back. Okay. Okay. That that's a that's a good one, and that's that. She her question was, how do you get the church members to rally behind you so that you can get um, to the goal of building a site that is professional and really reflects the community? And we're going to talk about that because because I I got into that. I went through that process. Um, okay. So moving on, what do church sites typically look like? Well, I went through some of the examples, uh, kind of did a search and saw, and this kind of kind of reflects what they look like. Here's one. This turns out to be the um, the church home of one of my developers at work, because um, we were talking about this, and he's a WordPress aficionado, and he was like, "Oh, let me just look at my church." And he looked at his site, and he was like, "Oh my God." <laughs> And I, and I said, well, you should be ashamed of yourself. You, you're a developer. You go there. You need to help them out. But honestly, this is, this is typically what this looks like. This is probably was made with a website builder. It's, of course, text heavy because it's probably made with, you know, the secretary did it, um, an administrative assistant, a volunteer, someone's son, who knows. Um, flash, you can't see it now, but there's flash, that, that photo across the top is flash. Um, and it probably has not been updated since 2008. And actually, that is true, because I looked at the bottom. The, the design has not been updated since 2008. So there, there's that. Um, here's a, a, a moth site for the, um, the local headquarters of Nation of Islam, uh, the Muhammad Moth site. They look like they're trying a little bit more. Um, it looks like they probably pulled from an old template, um, but you can see everything's like a flyer. You know, it looks like, hey, put up this PDF. That's another thing that, that you get. Uh, here's a PDF. Put that online, right? So they put that front um, and center uh, on the site. And of course, it, right, and yeah, you can barely read what's on the sidebar on the left. It, it, it's hard. And then here's, here's something that we were talking about with the images. It looks like um, this congregation is, is a synagogue, congregation uh, or vishalom. I hope I pronounced that right. But they look like they're trying, but with the photos, they're not quite there yet. So that you have that 
group photo from very, very far away. Yeah, I know this theme. This is the optimal theme. <laughs> Um, and, go, go ahead. Yeah, this is the optimal theme, which I actually used for a website a few years ago, but the problem is their picture, their slider picture isn't full width. It was too small for the slider. Exactly. Um, but it's nice because it has a place for the calendar on the left-hand side. It's actually a left-hand sidebar. Right. Exactly. So, I mean, they're, they're trying. They're trying to get there, but they still need to go to a web school <laughs> to learn a little bit about taking the proper photos for the slider. So why did we talked a little bit uh, uh, as I was going through this, why do these sites look like that? Obviously because they don't have the money to invest in a professional site. They have a so-so web designer, they're using a whole template. Um, they don't have a real person to, who knows what they're doing, so to speak, to um, make the site look good as well as maintain it properly. Um, so we, we started, the, the young lady in the back talked about, well, how do you get there to that uncluttered design, clean look that's more modern? Um, how do you get people to buy into using WordPress, right? Um, well, first of all, you want to invest in the right team. Maybe that person is you. Maybe that person to take the initiative is you to say, hey, I've been to these WordCamp um, conferences. I have some expertise in doing websites, um, put together a proposal um, and bring it to the people who are in power at your religious organizations, typically like a, a church council, the board, the pastor, of course, that's probably the, the rabbi, the imam. Have a meeting with them and give them a proposal of what you think um, the possibilities for your, your site can be, what it will look like, how it can service the people, um, also, how you can provide them with analytics to show them, well, these are the pages that would be helpful um, to members, so I can show you how many, how many people will get to these particular pages if I do it, and I can show you how to do it right. Um, the other thing is you, you want to show them examples, and this helped as well, show them examples of other organizations. When they see that, oh, across town, you know, Peachtree Presbyterian site looks like blah, 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 or, you know, the temple site looks like blah, 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 that may also um, be an incentive for them to think differently because they're seeing um, that other, the competition, so to speak, looks so much more professional, and this is what they have. So you want to get them into the 21st century other churches are doing it, we can do it too, right? Um, Rosemary, can I add something here? Go ahead. Um, uh, I do not, I, I'm actually a paid employee of nine churches, and um, it's basically my salary for the month, so I don't have to worry. And I make like about $5,000 a month just from those nine churches, and the, the, the fee can be as little as $150 a month all the way up to $2,500 a month, depending on the church. Now, um, getting started in churches, they may not have a lot of money, or you start with your own church, and you may even just do it for free, especially if it's like, you know, one of those. Um, you just want it to put a good foot forward. But the thing with churches, it's like the six, degree, six degrees of Kevin Bacon. Okay, <laughs> you do one great website, you will get the rest. And that's how I got it. Um, I've never ha had a church contact me because of my website. They've, I put my credit on the bottom of a website that I have built, and they call me. And I've done about 15 websites, but, and you have to present it in a balance of something that you know that they can afford. So if it's a small church, obviously I'm not going to charge them $3,000 for a, a small website. Um, but if it's a big church, I'm going to price it accordingly. And uh, my expertise comes from the balance of that front page has to be welcoming and give all the information for the people that are church shopping and easy for the current members to find what they're looking for. And a lot of that has to do with the question and the type of church. You have to get to know the church so you know what to build. But uh, um, she's right. Most churches don't have the budget until you get farther up where they, right now, the bigger churches, they used to have the IT people. They used to have 
the graphic designers and the web people. I used to work for two different churches, but I got laid off when the economy tanked. Now they're realizing that they can outsource all this. They can outsource the IT. They can outsource the website. Um, so there is money to be made out there. I mean, I'm making it. Here's what, here's what you do. If it's a committee-driven web church, now you don't have the churches where the pastor and the staff lead the church, and then you have the churches that are committee-driven. Find one person on staff, go to the staff meeting, have one person on staff be that point person. All the content has to flow from that one point person. So what I did for my church, it's a, it's a small church, it's probably, um, it's under, just under 1,000 members that actually you know, attend. Um, it's a Southern Baptist church, so you know they have thousands on the roll. So, um, uh, and if you're a Southern Baptist, you understand that joke. Um, but uh, what we did is we had all the different committees. It's a committee-driven church. I put a gravity forum on the website for all printed material for the e-newsletter, which I also took over, and the website. The only submissions I will take are from that, that form and it goes to the um, point person and a copy comes to me. That's mostly just for a heads up, but it will not go on the website until it's approved by the pastor that's in charge. And he, when he forwards it to me, I will put it up. That kind of keeps out the people who want to do the birthday parties and things like that. Okay, well, yeah. we'll take one more and we'll, we'll move on. Yeah. Sure, go ahead. I, I do um, basic just contract um, pricing, and I get to know my churches. That's why some of them, the only thing I do for them are events and podcasts. I update those. They're not going to pay as much as the ones I have ch churches, like you say, getting content. You know, you, you can beat them over a head with a stick, and they won't give you anything. Um, and then you have the people that, you know, want to send you absolutely everything. They're priced accordingly. And this is what I happened when um, I had a client uh, say, well, why do we have to wait for you, because I, I do a lot of work, to put it up? Um, and by wait means more than 10 minutes. Um, exactly. And, uh, I said, because this church pays me more. Hmm. So they're all, if their stuff comes in, it always goes in um, ahead of yours in line. So they pay me more than the first church now because they always want to be at the front of the line. Now, they are the ones I probably, on their site, five times a day, every day. It's a huge site in a, a huge church in Augusta, Georgia. And um, I got that because I used to work with the pastor, the business pastor, when I was at another church, who I met when I was at another church. So it, it just, just keeps going from there. So I don't okay. No worries, no worries. We'll, we'll definitely have more time for uh, Q&A, um, hopefully at the end. But she touched upon something that um, is definitely true for religious organization sites, that you have to create editorial guidelines. And that is something that I did too. Create a, an editorial style guide and guidelines and tell people, this is what I will accept and this is what I will not accept. It was, it was kind of a, um, a funny but true example with someone saying, can we do birthday shout outs? But then um, someone else sent me a very like three page description of what their particular ministry was. And I said, I can't accept this. Uh, you can only give me about two paragraphs. And then the other thing with the, the editorial guidelines, when I sent back my feedback that this was too long, you can only give me two paragraphs. In the guidelines, I gave an example. So I gave an example from a group that already created their two paragraphs for their ministry and provided an, a proper image. And I said, this is the kind of image you need to give me. 
these are the type of paragraphs, and that's it. Um, and, and that particular group did submit something. And the next group, I'm still waiting on them, it's been two years that they, they've contacted me, <laughs> that they wanted to update their site and they haven't. But um, that you, you have to, just like with, with secular sites, you do have to lay down the law that um, these are the guidelines that we have. Otherwise, it'll, it'll be, the site will turn out into the wild, wild west of anything and look like those other sites that we were looking at and where it was too many um, PDFs, bad images, um, flash and stuff. Well, we, we don't want that. We, you want something that's professional that also reflects the community. So um, moving on, just what are some of the common elements of religious sites? Typically, of course, the service times, how to get there, the address, phone numbers, bulletins are a big thing. I know that's a big thing with us that um, if a bulletin is not up by Monday, uh, there's all hell to pay, you know, because people have to download their bulletins. But um, also another uh, events, of course, are very important so people know what's going on, and that's something where that's been a challenge for us and with the solution I found, um, I can now meet that challenge. But also how to give, you know, people do that a lot. You know, people do that online, not only with their laptop, but with their phone. So you want to provide them with opportunities and um, widgets and plugins that they can do that safely online to make it uh, easy for them. And also sermons, you know, getting the, the, the sermons or the message online, either through a podca podcast or video, that's very convenient to people. And uh, another very big thing, of course, is live streaming and live streaming the service for people who, of course, don't feel like going to, going to service that day, or, you know, people who are sick or traveling um, who want to stay connected. So that's, that's another content item um, to consider to put on your site. So this is what our old template looked like. This is circled, circa 2012, and we just retired it in 2000, just this month, 2015. Um, I had a designer who volunteered, he was a member of the church, a designer developer who volunteered to create um, the new template for the site back in 2012. And as you can see, we got up to, up to date with times, making sure we had a logo. That's another thing um, to, to uh, consider when you're putting up and redesigning a site that usually with redesigns, it always starts with the, t the logo, right? Because everything else um, takes its cue from that, from the logo and the colors. So to make sure you get together with uh, the person who is doing the stationery and, and the print logos for your organization and make sure they create a web version. So we made sure we did that. Um, as you see, there's logo, there's the slider, and then we had uh, two columns in the middle for announcements and then two display uh, the information, static information about service times and downloading bulletins and, and, um, and the, the readings for the month. But eventually this uh, outlived its use because the style was outdated and um, we definitely needed to add a lot more content there and make it more user friendly. So I started going shopping because the, the person who was helping me, he's a developer, he didn't have time to redesign something, he could, he could help on the back end. But I also just wanted to find something easy that I can plug and play and just keep it moving. So what I discovered, and probably um, Melanie at, at the end of this when we take more Q&A could kind of back you up on that, that there's, there's not a lot of prefab church themes out there, especially not for you. And she's shaking her head, going, no, there's not, and it's, it's very true. Um, but what I did find in terms of something that's free is this church theme that works with Omega themes. It's, it's a child theme that works with Omega themes. And it's a basic uh, blog type site. And what it gives you is that big um, header image that you can plug in. Um, and lo it looks pretty clean. And you can add in um, plugins like a, a Google, uh, Google events calendar plugin. You can use that as, as your events calendar um, to populate events on the site. There are other um, 
plugins that I, I can uh, research and also I'm going to put this presentation on my personal site so you can download it and I'm going to add some more information to it. But I'll add some information on plugins that you can add to this um, if you don't have the budget and you want to try this out and you need something um, for events and for podcasting and, and for um, donations like maybe taking PayPal. Then the next one I looked at, and I like this one. Um, I felt for our community it was too um, modern for us, but I thought it was nice. It's called Evangelist, and it's with um, Theme Views is the company that created it. And what I liked a lot about it is with the slider, there's an events calendar. And events seems to be a very big thing for, for uh, uh, organizations that that's mainly what they're going to the site to say, what in the world is going on, right? So it's right front and center um, on the side of the slider that you can, you can see that. Um, the other things that they offer are um, that uh, the, the design is responsive, and that's a very big thing now to make sure that your design is responsive because people are looking um, uh, at sites on their phone a lot and maybe, you know, on their way, maybe they're coming to the church for the first time, maybe they, they've been going for the longest time and they forgot how to get there, right? So they're looking on their phone for directions and to see what's going on, so you want to make it as easy as possible to um, check it out on their phone. So this is a, a really good design for that as well. Um, let's see, what else? This is the design that we did. Um, settle on it's called exodus and it's by a group uh, called church themes and they make church themes they only have two <laughs> right now they have exodus and uh, I, i'm forgetting the name of the, i'm sorry yeah. are you Le, no <laughs> actually no <laughs> she's saying leviticus right i'm forgetting the name of the other one it starts with an r you might know what it is China, yeah, we're trying to, I'll, I'll remember it later. But we li I liked Exodus because I, I felt it was, it had a lot of good white space, a good slider um, at the top. It had a really good events calendar. And the other thing that I liked about it um, a lot is that it has a lot of widgets that make it very easy for you to um, add things, excuse me, add things to your pages that will show up throughout the site. So you can add, for example, um, your events calendar, put it on the home page, but it'll also you can you can set it up so it can appear on the sidebar. You can also set up a locations page that will appear on the home page and other places so people can go there and find a map on, and, and navigate, plug in how to get to your um, to your organizations, to your church or synagogue or mosque, or to, the, to the location itself. It also has um, a podcasting capability, um, as well as one of the other features that people like is to know who the staff is, right? So a lot of times what you see now, which is regular in the secular world, is you go to a site and you see a person's happy looking face and a little description about, you know, Pastor so and so used to play football, but now, you know, he he's playing football football for the Lord. You know, a little description or whatever uh, about who who the pastor is. That I mean that's pretty typical on secular sites, but now it's becoming more prominent on um, religious organization sites and that's what we're encouraging. And they have a, a particular widget that allows you to do that. So it just makes your life a lot easier and takes away the heavy lifting. Um, let's see. And also, they provide you with stock photography um, and a list of stock photography, which, which for us, I know for us, that's going to fill in the gap for now of making the site look fresh. Um, but it's a solution, one of the solutions that you can use to keep your site looking fresh to use stock photography instead of the crazy, you know, um, blurry or um, two, two vertical looking shots that people create that you really can't use. So this is our version. I'm going to see if, if I can take you to the live site. And um, I just want to say this, Let's see if we get there. Um, when I was in the process of putting this presentation together, our server for our hosting company crashed. So 
um, for a good month, <laughs> we had our old site up. For the, our site from January was up for like the, mar the month of March while our server, our hosting company figured out how to um, fix their server. So I actually had to rebuild the site to a certain extent in this template in like a week's time. <laughs> so it's not exactly 100% to where I want it to be, but I, I want to show you what we have so far. Let me see if I can. But, uh, okay. Okay, so as you can see, it has this, the big slider we have where we can put in um, the very professional looking images. Um, we'll be taking photos of the church uh, soon to populate this, and it, it gives you multiple options to put in uh, multiple slider images. But the other thing that I like is that it also gives you the option to put in a video, and the video plays in the slider as opposed to taking you to other places, and it's, it's compatible with YouTube, so that makes things immensely easy because YouTube is, is free, right? The other thing is you see right here is our mass times, and this is the widget that I was telling you about that you can um, create your indi individual piece of content and then it can populate in other places. So the mass times appear here and I can make them appear at other places. And then over here, this is something that I got as soon as this was launched, I, excuse me, as soon as this was launched, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I, I got some emails from the congregation that they love the middle widget area where you can put in um, three images that reflect content that you want to drive people to. And so having right front and center to download bulletins, people went nuts. They were, oh my God, I can find a bulletin. Okay. Um, also having the monthly, I mean, it was huge. That's, that's what they love the site for, <laughs> apparently, the bulletins. Um, and then, uh, hold on. And then just to have um, the monthly readings and then to give online was, it was, it was a big thing to make sure that front and center, that, that was there. Now in this middle space, I had planned to put in the events calendar and I just didn't have time during this presentation. But as, as you'll see, when you come back, you'll see the real, um, finished, complete version of this. Because as I said, I was working on the duress of the hosting site crashing, so. Um, but that's some of the features here. But as I mentioned, you can also put in the sermons. You can populate it with the, the um, people biographies. You can add a lot of um, videos. So with this theme, again, this, the sky is the limit. And if you have a, a bit of money to spend, I'd recommend it, and there's good support for it as well. Um, the young lady over there had a question. Uh, tomorrow is going to be posted for today, and that's a good point. And with bulletins, I mean, they tend, you, you don't want to break the wheel or have people go nuts because they're, they don't change a lot. So, I, you know, I don't want to have like an electronic, and I don't want to make my life miserable too, because I do have a full-time job. So um, with bulletins, it's a PDF, and that's what people want. That's what they're looking for. So we simply post a PDF. Now, that said, with your congregation, if you have people who are a lot younger, um, you might find a solution. That's something that you want to throw out as a question to us, to find a solution of more of an electronic bulletin that's something definitely um, that I would recommend. And, and before I, I turn it over to more Q&A and, and let um, Melanie speak, um, I just want to show you this slide of where you can get stock photography, um, that the church themes that I'm using, that they provided a list of where you can get stock for photography that's both free and for purchase. I know people are, are writing some of this down. Um, and then I'll, I'll come back to this slide in a, in a second. And then just, I'm going to post this, give me about a, a day to post this presentation online, but I'm gonna post it on my site. So it'll be there so you can download it. And I'm gonna also include additional things um, 
that you can, you can use and resources that you can go to to use um, to help you. So I'm going to turn it over for Q&A and to the wonderful Melanie, because it looks like she has, she has some additional things to offer. She was telling me some things about um, the plugins you, you were telling me about for podcasts and prayer requests. So I'd love you to mention that. Um, I'm going to go over some of the, the most used stuff that I use on all my church sites. Now, for podcasting, your basic podcasts, um, I have tried like all the free ones out there. Uh, probably the best one is PowerPress. Um, un unlike uh, her, I don't like themes that have all the stuff built in because in two years when she wants to change this theme, it's all part of the theme. So I like to do things with plugins. There's a few more um, church websites. Now I build in Genesis, Gen Genesis framework. So um, outreach is a great um, church ministry theme. Uh, um, also, Web Savvy Marketing out of Detroit has Genesis themes. They have one called Patricia and one called Christian. Um, that she names all her uh, themes after relatives. So, um, and Christian is a minister in her family, so she named the church theme after her, uh, after him. And um, uh, those are some I I've actually only ever used Patricia and I'm using it right now I'm build, building a custom theme based on that um, for a church here in Atlanta and uh, I but I actually took the top part of Patricia and the middle part of um, Christian because they that's what they told me they want something like this and something like this and so I just used them and you know put the two together um, but some of the plugins I use um, for PowerPress is probably the best one by Blueberry, B-L-U-B-E-R-R-Y, Blueberry. Um, uh, it's just a, a custom post type. It does audio. Um, if you're not storing your church's audio on Amazon S3, do that because if you have to back up your website. Don't, do not upload your sermons in the media browser because it makes for a huge website backup. Um, uh, one of the ones, I've tried ser uh, Sermon Browser, didn't like it. Um, it was too restrictive on how you could, the information was put in. Um, there's a new one out. Uh, Eric Mural from Long Hollow Church uh, actually built three custom plugins for his church. Now, it took him 18 months to build this website. It's awesome. If you just Google Long Hollow Church, you'll find it. Beautiful website. Um, but he built three custom plugins. And uh, one of them is Series Engine. And it allows you to put like sermon artwork and in one window you can do the YouTube or um, Vimeo video, the audio um, and all your notes and information. It could be bulletins, it could be group studies, anything in one window. And it has a widget for the front page and it has a short code builder. For instance, my church in um, Augusta they have a Wednesday service, a Sunday service. They record the student minister and the college minister, the men's breakfast, and the women's events. But I can build custom things for each one of those areas just with their short, his short code generator. Another one of his plugins that he built was Prayer Engine. Prayer Engine allows you to put prayer requests on your website, but it's interactive for your users. They can submit the prayer request. It becomes on there, you can make it public or, or private, and when somebody can click the I prayed for this button, the person that submits it gets an email that says I prayed for you. Um, another one, a lot of churches are doing small group studies in homes. They're not doing the, um, their churches are in like commercial property, so they really don't have like Sunday school at church. They're having their small groups. Um, he has groups engine where you can actually look up what the nearest small group to your house is and go there. Uh, I'm actually using it for a church who has all their small groups on campus, but it's a great way to list and it, be it becomes a searchable database. They're looking for a topic on uh, women that's only women, they can do that and it will list only the women's studies. So for, it works out great for the big churches. Um, event calendars, how does your church do event? Do they post the whole, everything that's going on every waking moment at the church? Um, you want a calendar that looks like a calendar. Um, or is, are they an event-driven church? 
um, and you only want the major events. We, we call the A, B, and C events that show. Um, event, um, all in one event calendar is great if your church uses Google Calendar. If you have the church secretary keeping the calendar in a Google Calendar, you can bring it in there. The beauty of it is you can make it not look like the Google Calendar. Um, it's not going to be blue. You can actually style the color. <laughs> and it automatically updates. When they update the Google Calendar, it updates the church website. So, like, that's a no brainer. Um, event for an event driven church, events manager. It's very customizable. It's a little cody for people who want to really, really customize how it looks. I use that one a lot. Um, it's called Events Manager, and then of course the Events Calendar is a big one. It's a free one. Has paid. Is is also a good one. Um, of course, Gravity Forms. Forms. I use a lot uh, for form submissions. Um, short Codes Ultimate. If you've not heard of Short Codes Ultimate, basically it's the kitchen sink of stuff you can put in your website. Um, the wordy people, they automatically get stuff in an accordion because I don't want the page to be super long. So um, class descriptions. And a lot of these you can combine together, like Event Manager and Short Codes Ultimate. I can put all the details of an event in an accordion so the calendar page looks nice and clean because I manual that way. Uh, Accordion where you have collapsible content where just the title shows with the little thing and it comes down or a spoiler. Um, I don't want all the words showing on the event calendar list. I just want the title, the date, the time, and view details. So I put all the event details in an, a collapsible accordion. Um, online sermon notes. I have one um, church that builds an interactive PDF that it's already up for today and people can download and fill it out. But that free Bible app, the one that looks little brown with the Holy Bible that everybody downloads, if you go to their website, they have an, a free online note builder that people can just search from inside the, um, the app on your phone, fill out the sermon notes for that. You can just put the topic headings and the scriptures and it will link to the Bible verses in that app and they can fill out the notes and email them to themselves at the, after the service. So that's a great one, and that's free. And if you, it's just the UVerse. That's the name of it, UVerse Bible app. They have a whole website built around um, being able to do that, and it's free. Uh, what do you find um, the best plugin or piece for giving? Giving. It all depends on what their content management system is. I have some churches that use ACS. Um, and uh, basically ACS has their own module and I just link to that. Um, I have some churches that use PayPal, the smaller churches that just use PayPal. Um, I have some churches that use, well, it's Active Networks now. It used to be Fellowship One or Server Shoe. They've kind of merged into Active Networks that use that, and you just link to their payment form. There's, there's lots of different ways. Um, I just built the giving form in Gravity Forms and hooked it to PayPal. And I can actually select, you know, I do conditional logic so they can give to a particular ministry or give to tithes and offerings and things like that. So, um, but those are my, my tips. I have, for those that are doing it, I, I can give you my card because I'll be happy to answer questions on the best way to do stuff uh, for church websites since I've been doing it for like eons. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Um, and as, as I mentioned, I'm going to also after this is over, I'm going to interview her and record her <laughs> saying all this stuff so I can add it to my site so you can also um, have it as well in, in writing and after you also um, barrage her with your questions after, after this. Uh, are there any more questions or any more, not just questions, comments, or again, if you want to go to church and you want to vent a little bit about your situation, feel free. <laughs> I'll turn it over to you. I wanted to hear a little bit more where you were talking about the editorial style guide for churches. Um, I don't know, is it possible to borrow yours or is there some source that we can maybe get some information or, or, or the start of a template that we could use? Absolutely. Um, I can definitely send you mine. Um, what I drew from initially was because I come from um, the journalism media field, 
I was initially taking some of my cues from the Associated Press style guide, if, uh, if, if you can imagine that, really looking at how they um, titled their, their dates and their times for announcements and in press releases. So I took that, and then I took just simple writing for the web principles of making sure um, if you have to have a very lengthy bit of text, four or five paragraphs of, of text on a page, that you make sure you break it up with um, subheads that are highlighted so that um, people know what each sections of the paragraphs are and they can decide whether they want to read it or not. Then in terms of um, creating the guide, I broke down um, what each pieces of content needed to look like and then what the guidelines for writing that content should be. So for example, calendar announcements. I, had, I said that the calendar announcement had to have a particular descriptive title and then a date and a time and then up to two, uh, up to two sentence description of what it was about. With ministries, they had up to up to two paragraph description of what their ministry um, is about. They can give me, and I, I told them in, in the guidelines, that it had to be a description of what their ministry is about, a who, what, where, when, why. They had to include um, their telephone number and the contact name of a person to reach out to. And in some instances where it was appropriate that they could provide um, an evergreen PDF flyer that I can include, but if it's something that's going to die in a couple of months, I'm not gonna, going to use it. So um, th that's essentially what you do. You sit down and, and you decide what kind of content is going to be featured on this site and then come up with rules of the road for each one of them. And I, again, I can send you mine. Um, but I also encourage you to look at other church sites as well. Um, and I'm, again, I'm gonna make sure I include as, as many resources on my website after this camp is over so you can go on and, and um, uh, take a look and bookmark and, and go back. Um, but looking at, at other sites to see what they've done and also to see this, the bad stuff that they've done, and say, oh, okay, I'm not gonna do it like that. Um, that that's what'll help. Okay, and one more quick question. You, you mentioned that your congregation really loved the bulletin. And so I'm wondering, has any, have you done or have you done um, like a little survey or something of the congregation, you know, of those different elements, which is the most important to them? That's a great question, because we have. We've, we've done it two times. And we learned <laughs> that the bulletin <laughs> That the bulletin was like, um, the bulletin was the most important and then um, mass times was, was important for them to know that. What I'm finding, because with this theme it allows for comments, I'm finding um, this is something new and we'll see if this is something that resonates with people. We're finding that people are interacting with us. So people are leaving comments now asking about things, asking about mass times. Um, asking about how to become a member for a Catholic church. We, we're not in the evangelization business, so when a lot of times people say become a member, it's like, um, I think you have to call the office. You know, so that's something now that we have to, um, or rather I have to really break down online in baby steps. Well, how do you become a member of Our Lady of Lourdes Parish? If you're Catholic, what do you do? If you're not Catholic, what do you do? If you just want to pass through, what do you do? You know, what, what's the process? So, um, yeah, uh, to her point, doing a survey as well, because we've done that before and a couple of times, doing a survey of your organization of what they would like to see on the site makes a whole lot of good sense. And I think, is, is my time up? I'm not sure. Uh, somebody waving at me. <laughs> we, I mean, we could, we could keep going if you'd like. Go ahead. So I have found myself working at my church and doing our communications, our electronic newsletter, a very old-fashioned Methodist church. So mm -hmm. the fact that we just moved to e-newsletter, like, whoa. 
So our website looks terrible. And I'm learning from the School of Hard Knocks. Do you have any resources or books or websites that help someone who, I don't have a background in web design, I'm learning WordPress. All right, a good thing to look at is um, W3 Schools. It was what I've always looked at, and she's going to hand you her card. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, W3 Schools is, is what I, I swear by, because that's definitely a help in terms of giving you the basics of, of coding and, and just under, understanding coding is, is the, the first step of it all. Um, I think the name of the site is, it's, it's I, I, I'm going to have to give you my information to get back to you with it, but it's, it's a really good design site. It's, I think it's called Smash something, but I'll, I, I have it bookmarked, but it's a really good design site that takes you through the process of what's good design and, and what's not, and then also does a lot of um, posts on the top 10 um, like WordPress, really good word, WordPress sites that you can use. And then simply if you go to the WordPress.org site since you're new and maybe just working with a theme would help you, just go to WordPress.org and look at you know, the popular themes and download them and just play around with them and see um, what resonates with you. I think that the most important thing I recommend to people when you do a site is not to build your site on a theme, <laughs> to actually plan the site out in detail first. Get your site map, get your, um, the content that you want to put into your site, the images, um, write down what you're going to call the menus, get that all down first on a separate document. So then that way, once you're working within a theme, you're simply plugging and playing and rearranging, and it's not so overwhelming. Thank you. Sure. I could do a whole hour talk on how to name your buttons. <laughs> Okay, I, I think my time is up. I thank you very much. I want to just give Melanie a hand here for jumping in there. And um, I'm, I'm here. If you have any more questions, definitely come up to me or just contact me through my site or phone number. Thank you.